by now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Archie Comics' Sonic the Hedgehog series, longest-running comic based on a video game franchise, shockingly deep, heady lore, and despite the banal down-to-earth vibes suggested by the name Archie, COMPLETELY BATSHIT INSANE! Like the pre-crisis DC Comics version of Sonic the Hedgehog. Or hey, like the Riverdale version. So I guess that whole Archie thing makes sense after all. What better place to start than with the ancient supervillain Mammoth Mogul and the day he achieved godhood? And what better way to celebrate than by clutching an entire universe in your palm and squeezing it like a stress toy? Trillions dead instantly. A comic for children, remember? This was without a doubt the most consequential story ever told by Archie Comics, a plotline built up for a decade. It was up to one awkwardly drawn anthropomorphic animal man to save the day. He was the prophesied chosen one of legend, and his name was, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. The sidekick, Tails the Fox. What did you think I was gonna say? I'm Jocelyn, and I do all the research and nobody else wants to, straight from the desk of death battle. First, we need to talk about the multiverse. It exists, and every universe or zone has its own Sonic the Hedgehog, including the No Zone, which is situated 90 degrees to everything else. That implies something perhaps quite frightening about gravity and inertia between universes. Like, if you're a No Zoner that went to a different zone and you stepped outside, would you just go shooting off into space? Or would the force of your home gravity pull at you the same as this new universe's gravity and rip your body to shreds? Oh, wait, no. He's just standing on the comic panel itself. That's way more confusing. Introducing my original character, Do Not Steal, Zonic. He's a zone cop. A healthy multiverse is like a healthy digestive tract. It needs proper structure and order for everything to go through smoothly. And zone cops keep a large hedgehog mono eye out for trouble. And what could be more troublesome than an egomaniacal mammoth traipsing around the multiverse, destroying every universe he could literally get his hands on? After absorbing the chaos energy of the green apple flavored chaos knuckles, Mogul was unstoppable. So Zonic called up our furry orange pal to save the day. That's right, the anthropomorphic fox boy with the magical rotating asshole, otherwise how else would he get those tails to spin, was the key. Why him and not his blue best friend who's nine to five is kicking supervillain ass? Uh, it's a long story. Long as in this whole plot line started, I kid you not, 10 years earlier and was built up as the biggest story in Sonic Comics history. Tails wasn't just the blue blur's bus boy, he'd gotten his own miniseries. He fought Mogul in the past, and the chaos gods known as the Ancient Walkers declared Tails to be the chosen one. The chosen one fated to defeat Mogul once and for all. And then we didn't hear about it for like 50 issues until, surprise, the Tails we've been following for like two years was a clone created by Mogul because Tails is the chosen one. And no one knew the difference the whole time. And then the clone Tails just dies and is never mentioned again. Back to the plot. Zonic didn't know any of this though, so he invited every Tails from across the multiverse to fight. We've got Benjamin Franklin Tails, Brooklyn Hipster Tails, Care Bear Tails, and of course my favorite, either Neo from the Matrix or Public Flasher Tails. I can't tell which. Just throw them all at God and hopefully one of them will stick. Or, you know, get completely obliterated. Zonic? I doubt Rootin' Tootin' Cowboy Tails is the chosen one of legend. But whatever, Mogul shows up and doesn't just immediately destroy the universe like all the others. He challenges the army of Tails to a fight. Uh, wasn't his hand like the size of a galaxy earlier? Why is this a fight? Doesn't matter. The chosen one doomsday clock finally hits midnight and Tails believes in the heart of the cards. Without really explaining anything about the actual physical mechanics of what's going on, Tails absorbs every other Tails in the multiverse into himself and become swole. Why? How? Ugh. All that matters is this new and improved Titan Tails instantly defeats Mogul and absorbs his chaos powers with his rotating asshole. It really was magical after all. Now the, and I quote, ultimate power in the multiverse, Creatine Tails departed to what could have only been a higher plane of existence, a changed being, forever divorced from the material world, a prophecy disguising a tragedy. Oh wait, no. He just shows up normal again on the next page. The most important battle in the history of everything, a decade of buildup, a prophecy, a clone saga, all of that over in five pages. It wasn't even the main story, it was a back issue. <sighs> Come back next month, kids, for more weirdly fetishistic art that'll awaken something deep within you for the rest of your life. Speaking hypothetically, of course.
Fun fact, all Death Battle members are 73.6% stronger and happier. So don't miss out on your chance to directly support the team by clicking that join button. And thanks for watching!